After my experiment with 30 days of prayer as an atheist that got so viral that it even warranted a reaction video from a popular YouTuber, there have been three main struggles that are preventing me from deepening my understanding of the concept of a god. I don't claim to have any answers at all. I feel more confused than I ever have been in my life. I'm just trying to share the journey. At this moment, I feel closer to God, but further and further away from religion. And the reason why I feel this way is this first question that I ask myself. Can a logical analysis of the universe come to a logical conclusion of God's existence? And it actually made me consider whether pure atheism, the absolute and definitive denial of a God, makes logical sense in itself. In the atheist perspective, did everything in the universe come from nothing at all in this paradox of logic, or did something thing create everything in the universe? This question brought me to my second challenge. If God is real, which religious text should I rely upon to follow his will properly? Every religion will confidently tell you why their path through the maze of truth is right and why all of the others are wrong. And this paradox in itself is the reason probably why I've been avoiding this question for the whole time. It's so much easier for me to claim ignorance or denial that I don't need to enter the maze at all than to deal with all the different paths that I would have to follow to try and find the truth. And so the third challenge was if I did choose one text, how should I interpret that text? In the Bible that many have quoted as a source of truth in the comments, something as simple as the earth being created in six days stated in Genesis leaves me wondering what should I trust from the Bible, if anything at all. These three challenges that I'll explain a bit more in depth are the reason why, after all of this, I feel closer to God and further away from religion. I feel closer to God because of what I felt from that experience of prayer that I did for 30 days, even if that definition of God is just the placebo effect even though the placebo effect itself is very real and in a sense kind of supernatural. But I feel further away from religion as I hear more about the contradicting claims of truth that I hear about each of these texts. But I must admit this is coming from my own infant perspective of theological texts. So I've been looking into watching people who have done the research on both sides. Something that I've been doing recently is looking at people who have come away from Christianity as previous uh, Christians and people who are coming to Christianity as previous atheists. I think looking at people who are already convinced of either perspective is going to give me probably 40% of the results that I can see from people who are actively trying to leave what they previously believe because they will have so much more understanding around those concepts. So what I've found is that if I dive further into each of those two different things, Christians becoming atheists or atheists becoming Christians, I feel like the more I look into each and either of them, the more I feel like I could believe either way. But let's think about this together with our first challenge. Can a logical analysis of the universe conclude with God's existence? In the book I was recommended to read by so many of you called Mere Christianity by a former atheist skeptic called C.S. Lewis, he explains the fundamentals of human desire, deep human desires that really attach to a certain physical thing that can be attained. He explains that the reason why we have such deep hungers for food or such deep need for thirst means that obviously there is water. If we have such deep hungers, there is food. If we have deep spiritual needs, there must be something more. He says, if I find myself a desire which no experience in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that I was made for another world. Stepping back, I feel like both solid belief in God and solid disbelief are fundamentally closer to each other than they seem. They each involve a conviction about something that is logically incomprehensible to the human mind. You can either think irrationally as an atheist that everything in this universe was created from nothing at all, or you can think irrationally as a theist and believe that God created everything, but you can't explain it because you can't explain God. I also think sitting on the fence like like me is almost worst because I feel like I'm being forced to walk this tightrope and I can't lean too far left or too far right and I have to inch forward so slowly just to be able to move forward. But to stand up from all of this armchair thinking, there is something I do know from experience. 
Belief in God seems to lead to a more fulfilling life. That's what I observed from people who have faith and those who lack it, and from my experience with that short experiment of prayer. And at the end of it, I realized maybe I'm going about this all wrong. Attempting to solve questions of faith with logic is kind of like trying to paint emotions by using mathematic equations. Mathematics is about precision and defined values. It can describe clear, rational structures, but it falls short when it comes to expressing the subtleties of human emotion. Imagine trying to capture the joy of a sunset, the sorrow of loss, or the warmth of love using mathematical equations. No matter how intricate the formula, you could never convey the true essence of what is felt. You would have to leave the realm of rationality to truly understand the essence and the feelings behind these illustrations. Personally, I knew I was ready to take a leap of faith, which led me to my interest in religious texts, but that in itself opened up another can of worms. Challenge 2. Which text of truth leads to God? There is one God, but many religions derived from that God. How do I know which is true? This is like trying to enter a maze with multiple entrances to find God at the center, and it's hard to tell if all of them, if any, lead to him. All religious leaders standing at each entry point claim they have reached God and can guide you to him. Here are the troubles and challenges that I've found within religious texts. From my atheist perspective, I once believed that the Bible, the Quran, and the Torah, often quoted as ultimate sources of truth by believers, were simply books of presumed truth. It wasn't until later that I realized they are actually collections of stories stories, each written by individuals who claimed to be influenced by God. Here's the problem, neither God nor Jesus wrote any of these texts. These are stories passed down by third parties, prone to memory degradation, loss in translation, and powered by their own selfish agendas. Even if I were to believe that these stories came from a source of divine truth, it's hard to ignore the fact that inevitably these things would have been corrupted in small and significant ways over time. Because of this, interpretation becomes subjective, and it's obvious why we have all of these different denominations, or even different religions, following one God. Understanding this led to the third challenge. How should I interpret these religious texts? The hard part of the skepticism is that I would have to read all of them to truly say I can understand the differences. The way that I navigate this is that all that I'm doing by reading something like the Bible is trying to understand the collective perspectives of all of these people who claim to have you know, witnessed or experienced divine truth. I just want to know what they say about the nature of human life and how we should live so that I can pluck the best things that I like from that and put it into my own life. To me, without a heavy faith, it's just as if I were to listen to Greek mythologies and pull the same kind of timeless lessons that I would learn from those stories. But I really wish I didn't have to think like this. This is where I wish, if he did exist, that God or Jesus would have written the Bible, or whatever. But that thought in itself got me thinking. Perhaps the true nature of having a Bible is seeing whether you interpret it for your own selfish desires, because you would find that within your heart immediately. You would know if you were lying to yourself, and in a sense, God would know too. So from here, to put it plainly, my bias is that I want to believe in God. I want to fill the empty void that atheism left within me, but I know I just cannot trick myself into this, which is why I've been looking at people who have left Christianity as well as people who have left atheism swapping sides. During this time, I have continued to pray, giving gratitude for God, but also asking for guidance. But I know the biggest struggle I have is that my mind and my heart are torn in two separate directions. One of the most popular comments in the last video was this, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. From that, I think three things. Either I will be graced with God's presence, I will confirm my own confirmation bias, or nothing will happen. Who knows? If you have any suggestions for me, I'd love to hear them because I'm diving deeper and deeper into this because I'm getting more and more confused. But whether or not God is real, I have one wish, that you design yourself a fulfilling day.